Hey guys, this is another Guild Wars 2 PvP build guide with gameplay, as usual. This time we're going to look at Engineer for a first, and this is a Static Discharge Berserker, or not Berserker, but High Damage Engineer build, with um, specializing in massive instant type of bursts with decent sustained range damage and high pressure on targets. So I'll get into traits, and so Engineer only has one weapon, so this makes it quite simple. But we run rifle, of course, for the massive burst damage and utility the weapon has, with CC as well. So we run air intel, you could run air energy. I'm going to switch to energy for now, actually. Our crit chance is quite high, so we don't really need intel sigil, <coughs> but it's nice for the guaranteed crits. Okay, so yeah, air is just a nice single target burst, so that adds to your massive burst. Rune of Vampirism for the high power and you become the mist form when you get below 25%. You can also run Pack Rune, that's another variant there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So we run Marauders, Marauder Amulet as well for the high power precision and health. We have 22k health on an engineer. And onto the traits now, we run explosives, firearms and tools. This is all like damage specialized trait lines which focus in bursting. And uh, where is it? Uh, tools is the most important for static discharge, although the trait line doesn't really specialize in damage that much. But yeah, explosives, so <coughs> create a bomb when you dodge every 10 seconds, that is 800 damage on baseline and it gives vulnerability. This is combat only as well. <coughs> then increases the throw velocity and blast radius of all grenade skills, so that's them. <coughs> I'll go through what grenades to use and stuff in a second. So explosion scores vulnerability, that's like your grenade barrage, your poison grenade, everything there. This is a really great skill that we have now, an engineer aim assisted rocket, so like every one in three hits you fire a rocket at a foe that's homing and it's like 1000 damage but it crits for like 3 or 4k which is massive and it's a 1500 range. And imp improved damage from explosions, so all your grenade skills do higher damage there and your dodge roll. Where is it? And also turrets explode and knock back foes when destroyed, and we run two turrets there. Then, so your mortar fields last longer, and your orbital strike has an additional strike. Nothing else here is really that great. This skill, this trait's actually really bad. It's just a blast finish every 10 seconds. Onto firearms, we have critical hits have a chance to cause bleeding, so that's a 1 in 3 again. 
and the bleeding's a bit low, but it's a nice boost to your damage, like the warrior trait. Warriors also have this. <coughs> then heavy armor exploits every time you crit, like every one in two crits, you put Von on your foe and gain swiftness. That's really nice there. We don't run conditions, that's bad, and you could run this if you're good at getting up in people's faces, but we have a high enough crit chance as it is. Then you have increased chance to crit against bleeding foes. Foes will always be bleeding from this trait, sharpshooter here. So that's just a nice 10% crit chance bonus. Then you have attack faster with rifle, rifle, and those skills have reduced recharge. So these all recharge faster, and you attack far, and um, you attack faster with them. Then bleeding you cause lasts longer. So this sharpshooter trait lasts longer. This is also like the warrior trait. Then burning you apply lasts longer and Every time you crit, you put two stacks of burning on a foe. This is nice for more pressure, and makes them bait a condi removal or use a condi removal. <coughs> this is every 10 seconds though, but it's like there's nothing else you should really take. You could take modified ammunition, but we don't have very many access to conditions ourselves. Then tool belt skills crank vigor. This is just a nice little vigor bonus. It's not very long, but oh well. Then Static Discharge, one of the main parts of the build, a 500 base damage, 1200 range for every tool belt skill you use, <coughs> even your heal. Then Recharge of tool belt skills is reduced, that's nice. Streamlined Kits is your new, like, Perma Swiftness Speedy Kits thing. You could run Analyze as well, that's another option. It's It casts the utility goggles on someone when you hit them in stealth, but this is not, like, guaranteed, and you might not hit anyone in stealth. And this is just perma swiftness and leaves a nice skill or two behind. Then while at full energy um, endurance you deal additional 10% damage. So with your initial burst you just try and keep it full and um, don't dodge for your initial burst. And then if you do dodge you have high endurance generation passively. You could also run kinetic battery but it's a massive cooldown. And we don't run any gadgets there. So those are the... Um, that was the equipment and these are the traits so I'll get into the weapons and the everything how to play so with the with this build here we run rifle so rifle auto attack is 1200 range range pressure it's nice for auto attacking just pressuring targets down from a long range a two second immobilize to set up your burst combo I'll get to that in a second uh, I'll be right back in a second guys just one sec yeah, I just had to fix my NVIDIA driver that to, like, update or something there. Okay, but yeah, so, your rifle 3 is a massive burst, depending on how close you are to the target, but this hits really high, so just use that whenever you can. Up close, don't waste it. It's a really great skill. Overcharged shot is really great in combination with other skills. It's a self-knockback, but your foe gets launched and knocked back as well. Really great on downed targets, so if someone's getting revived and the person reviving has stability, you can just knock the person who's downed away. You also get knocked back, but while your opponent gets knocked back, you can just chuck a grenade barrage on them. It's about that far as well, by the way. I just know that from playing Engineer there. And then your jump shot is just you use it on a target. It's great for massive insane damage, so it deals 2,400 damage to AoE targets, and it's a combo leap finisher. But this is like a thief backstab to five people, so if people are getting rezzed there, just bounce on them hits them twice, proxy sigils, everything, it's really nice. <coughs> Your healing skill is quite difficult for new engineers to use, but there's nothing really better here. Run AED if you're not too confident with other skills, but I'll try and explain it here. So, I'll go through it slowly first. Your, your 6, when you proc it, it turns into this skill, which overcharges your turret and creates a water field. And when this water field is created, you can blast it to make an area blast finisher, which blasts your healing. So that's about an 8k heal. Even though it says it's a lot less, that's 8,000 health. On a 20 second cooldown, that removes two conditions, which is really great. Then, toolkit is great. Toolkit's an amazing thing. High auto attack pressure. We don't really use it for the auto attacks, though. This is great to cripple and bleed people who are in stealth. So, for example, if someone drops Shadow Refuge, just drop this on it. Then pry bar is what you follow up with magnet. This is a 3 second block on a 20 second cooldown which is great so if you see a big burst incoming just block if you're taking high pressure you can just block it all. So magnet is a 25 second cooldown 1200 range pull so that's about how far is that? 1200 range is that 
long so you can pull someone from where that strikes there to you and then instantly pry bar them and then knock them back with overcharge shot and then fire your surprise shot and grenade barrage on them and that's like a massive big burst combo from a range there's also another co combo which I'll talk about in a second but yep so that's um that's your toolkit it's really great Rifle turret is only run for the surprise shot, which is a 900 damage base, and it shoots the static discharge, so it's a 1,400 damage base um, range projectile, which goes really fast as well. I'll just show that off here. So yeah, it just shoots there really quickly, and you can use it whichever direction you're facing. I'll go up to a bot here and show you that. So yeah, so there's a light golem here. I'm facing away from it, and then it just pops out of my ass and then shoots him there and so that's only on a six second cooldown so that's really spammable and makes great use of static discharge onto grenade kit so grenade kit auto attack is relatively low it's just good for stacking vulnerability it's not the greatest though this is high bleeding so this um try and do this whenever it's on cooldown because it's permanent bleeding then and you have a trait here so increased chance to crit against bleeding foes so try and keep your bleeding up with grenade too Blindness is good for if someone's getting a stomp and you need to you need to just basically um, blind them like a guardian. If an ally is stomping a guardian there, you can just blind the guardian or a warrior or engineer or necro or thief. Uh, one second. Okay, so yep. Yeah, um, your freeze grenade is a 20 second cooldown high damage grenade that does a lot of chill, so try and lose this at the start of the fight so your opponent's rotations are bad or like a bit messed up and they're a bit off and your poison grenade they recently changed this but um, it's just a high poison it's 24 seconds of poison one stack or maybe three stacks eight seconds but it's just it's great for when someone's downed so they reduce their healing and when you see someone use a heal skill and it's high damage as well so 435 435 this is actually times three since there's three grenades so 1200 damage isn't bad this one is also very high damage, your highest damage grenade is your shrapnel grenade so just spam this whenever you can I'm telling you it's like really important there onto your mortar kit skills, so your mortar 1 is just a long range projectile explosive this is a poison field when someone's down last 6 seconds a chill field at the start of fights, great to put set on points, these are all really good great to set on points by the way it just messes up your opponents and this is a heal also so when you're low or in trouble say this is a last resort or stack it up with a heal to blast so yeah that was the area healing thing I was talking about there so you basically spam 6 and when the second 6 goes off instantly press F1 so 6 6 6 6 6 6 F1 like that and then so into the tool belt skills so yep here just gain regeneration and bigger um, chuck a wrench that deals high damage and puts out the static discharge bolt and puts vulnerability on a foe. It's also um, a combo finisher, so if there's like burning on the ground or poison on the ground, I'll show it off here. And then you just chuck a, like a burning wrench and it comes back to you, so it hits them both ways. 1,800 damage coefficient. A surprise shot bullet, so I already talked about that one, it's really great. Grenade barrage is like the main reason we run grenade kit, to be honest, and it's just massive damage on a single target like that and orbital strike is a double blast finisher so you can set up your double blast with your blast from the water field as well to make the healing 11 plus 3 um, 14k heal so I'll show that off here and you wait a second or two and then pop your 6 I waited a bit too long there but yeah you know what I mean so yeah those are the skills those are some rotations and some tricks there and I hope you like the build and remember to subscribe. I'll get into a match now real quick as well. See you guys in a sec. Keep up again here. We have three pretty bad maps for the build, but Forest should be good if we get it. No one picked Kylo, wow. Well. One second. Okay, sweet, we got Forest of Niflo, which is really good for the build, like you can roam around on this map relatively easily and also your rifle 5 jump shot can be used as mobility although it's not the greatest but every little bit helps let's check the teams out We're running a pretty balanced team comp with like one of each class all pugs though against like a pretty 
again, balanced team, but they have two Necros. Necros are really strong now, and they have three people in the party, which is not great. The matchmaking has been really bad today, like, they always put Pogs against parties. Probably not many people playing, that means, but yeah, so if you're new to the channel or just don't know this, if you right-click someone and it says join party, it means they're in a party, and if they, it says invite to party, it means they're solo, so our whole team's solo, and they have three people there. If all five say join party, it's either a five-man party or a three-man and a two-man party. Um... I'll just go to combat here. Let's check the mounts. It's great to try and see an enemy build before the match starts, just so you know what you're up against. Looks like a Shadow Upt Mesmer, probably. Uh, Necro has no signets. Power well Necro, probably. <coughs> not very, um... Not very squishy, so it might be Minion Mancer. Well, anyway, I'm going to start mid on the build because of my pressure from Orbital Strike and Water Kit, like I showed off before, and just lay down fields everywhere. The chill field's really great, and it does high damage too. Uh, no one's going to get home. Actually, they are. But yeah, you don't start Beast on this map. This range is really stupid, but I just might as well help him out. Okay, that was a very bad idea. But yeah, you should never do that. You should always start mid and skip this. Oh shit, they sent too far. And they, they didn't steal our beast at least, so I'm gonna pull this guy with magnet. He evaded. Gonna knock him back, CC him there. Surprise shot. Surprise shot has massive pressure there, as you saw. And jump shot there for the... Oh shit, vampirism ruin. I still went down. Oh, this guy got stability. This range is a really bad player, but what can you do? Pugs are pugs. Doesn't even get the stomp there and lets him rally. Or lets him get the res. But looks like we sent one far as well. I'm gonna go far from spawn. Wait, what are we? We're blue. Okay, looks like home's do not doing too great. We're decapping far and they're gonna send people back home. Watch this, a warrior. Hit me harder. Oh shit, that guy did hit me harder. Okay, I got him down there from the pressure, but I almost went down myself. Okay, gonna get him with the pry bar there and the stomp. Necros in um, Plague and Lich are really easy to take out because they have no con they have no um, like escape or von invuln skills. Oh, he runs Vampirin too. Cool. Yeah, just auto attack pressure him. He can't do anything. Uh, looks like our Necro died at far in a 2v1, but that's okay. He held it. Hell, he held it off enough. And now we're all gonna go mid and decap it, and then our Necro is gonna die, and then come back mid, and we win. For now, we might have stolen their beast. I don't know, because we're ahead somehow. Let's block. Let's not do that. Okay, we got a, we got our full grenade barrage off on him. That was dumb. Okay, gotta evade those those um gotta evade those earth shakers there. Pressure him down. Okay, sweet. And just range pressure the warrior there. Now range pressure with our mortar kit. This Mesmer just did a really stupid thing there and jumped down right in front of me. Let's nade barrage him there. 8k there. Really nice. Cool. Home's getting decapped. Far. We're sending 3 to far. Looks like the range is on far. Not too bad. He's holding up pretty well in the 2v1. I'm gonna get the engineer here first. Try and pull him. Okay, gonna pressure the warrior here. Uh, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, how did he res? 
I got shit their whole team's here. Shit. Okay, that was a bad idea of me to do that. That was pretty stupid. And I'm chilled. Oh, well, we held four of them at, at far, but our whole team is really bad and no one went mid. Where the fuck are they? Three of, three of our team went to take spawn here. It's a caliber of players that are in this queue. But yeah, you never you never normally do these buffs unless you're like ahead or they're free and you own, own two or more points. There's like a necro at our spawn. I'm gonna head mid straight away. I like going around the back of mid in this map, but it's quicker to go straight through. Like when you start, you should start around the back of mid, like up there. Uh, engineers targeted. They have a pretty not too great warrior on their team. Like it just eats all my pressure. Let's get an orbital strike up here as well. Uh, knock back if we can. Yep, <coughs> we got it. Immobilize. Jump shot. And then boom, necro down. So that was a little a little combo there as well that I tried to show off. And he rallied, of course, because uh, why not? Let's get our grenade barrage down there. High pressure. Immobilize. Uh, he's running the knockback turret thing as well. Chill grenade here. Oh, we got the seeking rocket off. Knock back, surprise shot, and he should die. Let's get our orbital strike down. And some range pressure. And sweet, I had to knock him back there in case he was on the point. Uh, let's see, PvP capture. I never capture points, so I never really get that. But yeah, far is good. I'm gonna head back home, backtrack here. Hopefully, not many, not too many people do it. If our Ellie and Necro, oh, okay, that home's fine. But yeah, just look out on the map for that. Like the whole build is aimed around help helping other people and just bursting targets down. So you've got to have good map control, map presence, and just map awareness in general. They don't really need me there, but there's no point going anywhere else. Uh, Mesma coming in mid. He stealthed and went for me. Which is a really stupid idea, just block everything. I know how to play Mesma, man. I know how to play Mesma. Okay, get orbital strike down here. Pressure these guys. Yep, just got a 6k over there. Um, I fell down by accident. <laughs> that was not good. Uh, I'm gonna try and pull this NG to me. And then pressure him. I uh, have to block here. I feel like I'm being pressured. I'm gonna get my mortar kit up here. I have to knock back the necro there. The Mesmer's on me again. And we have one down here. Looks like mid is getting lost. I'm gonna head back for a second and pressure with pressure with my mortar kit. Mortar kit's great for range pressure, like you can see here. I can't really do anything about that dude. Okay, we lost mid it seems here. Necro's pressuring me. I'm just gonna try and decap home there. But yeah, our whole team went down, nothing you can really do. They all just rushed in and died. I'm gonna decap this, <coughs> hopefully not die. Just they shouldn't fight there. Oh, fuck. He just did the whole burst thing to me. Luckily, I have vamp runes. <laughs> just got an air proc on him. Oh, I should have knocked him off. I should have waited on that. Okay, I just want the engineers down. Just finish him off like this. Okay, warriors incoming. Get our blocks off. That was a lucky block there, I, w I must say. Let's get the knockback. 
I'll show you our stability. A lot of your control and damage also comes from CCing the targets, then applying pressure. So if someone has stability, like a warrior, you can't really do much there. I I went down again. That's the destroyer warrior build that I showed off before. They're only slightly ahead because of the beasts. We have point control at the moment, though. If this necro doesn't instantly go down, I can maybe help him here. Shit, this necro is holding up really well, I must say. That is impressive. I'm gonna get orbital strike on point. Warrior evaded me. Necro ain't evading shit. <laughs> yeah, perfectly timed bitch. Okay, gonna CC the warrior here. A bit of pressure. Oh shit, the Necro just stealing all my life. Oh no, the warrior got a triple. He's shitting me. So <laughs> the the re the melee. Yeah, that was that was all me. That was all me. Cause I got the Necro down. Okay, warrior is dead. It's gonna be another close match. Whoever gets mid controls is probably gonna win. We got a downed here. We probably win this match, to be honest. Pretty impressive considering they have three in a party. This warrior is. Uh, yeah, they're doing pretty well. The necro is quite good. That was shocking. I got him down there. Gonna get this guy off point. I got feared. But yeah, so just n when you knock back, follow up with grenade barrage usually. Otherwise, try and pull them. And then Magnet and Orbital Strike always whenever it's off cooldown, like I've been doing. And your damage comes from CC, like I said earlier. Well, not really your damage, but like your, your control and ability to put out damage. And yeah, we won. A 40 point lead, that was quite a close game. Looks like we did pretty well. Let's see, 9 kills. We defended four times and neutralized a couple times too. So yeah, that was the Engineer Static Discharge Marauder build. I hope you enjoy it and test it out. Feedback's appreciated and remember to subscribe for more videos like this. See you guys next time.